the wall of the museum. How anthropology investigates the cultural heritage of the future. Sharon MacDonald, Humboldt Universität zu Berlin. On the 9th of November 1989, I watched the news on television with my husband in Oxford. I was astonished, as we visited in 1983, and never expected this. Well, I should probably begin by saying that I'm not advocating going and knocking holes in the walls of museums. Rather, what I want to do is talk about how we can rethink the existing walls of museums to open up questions about their core roles in society today. Now, museums are not only about the past. They're also about the present, and they're about the future. They're where we put the things that we think especially matter from the past and from the present. So they're where we're defining what we see as important values and identities from today. Now, that is quite a responsibility. And it's a very difficult practical task. And in some ways, it's a task that has got more difficult um, over the last century. Now, part of that is because we feel that there's actually more stuff around that we could collect. And accompanying that is also a feeling that time is kind of getting faster and that the past is getting more and more recent. To give you an example of that, um, let me show you me. <laughs> um, this is me uh, with my mobile phone that I had until very recently. And I finally thought, I'd better get a new one. And one of the reasons, really, was I was starting to notice that people were thinking about me a bit like I was a kind of antique for having this sort of phone. Now, that phone is less than 10 years old. But these days, in many countries, people are changing their phones uh, less than every two years. Um, so suddenly, a 10-year-old phone becomes quite old. Now, in some ways, the pace of change is getting even faster. Um, in some areas at least. So we know that when landlines were introduced, so in the US, it took just 70 years after landlines were introduced to get to 90% of households actually having um, a phone. For mobiles, that happened in uh, less than 20 years. Um, and now, apparently, there are more mobiles on the planet than there are people. Now, that sets up a problem for museums. Which do they collect? Do they want an example of everything? Do they collect on innovations? Do they collect um, on the basis of aesthetics or on social use? Now, we struggle with those kind of problems. What do we keep to keep a sense of ourselves, of our memories? Um, so at individual levels, we face this and all sorts of experts and techniques around to try and help us uh, with some of that, including sometimes when it gets too difficult and we need people to come in and help us declutter, as it's called these days. But for museums, these problems are magnified because they have the role of collecting the significant stuff for all of us uh, today. Now, um, these problems are magnified for all kinds of reasons. Some of them include the fact that no longer do museums think they only have to keep the stuff of the kings, the queens, the emperors, and so on. Yeah, they have to keep that. But they also really want to try um, to represent our increasingly diverse societies um, and collect things from popular culture and so on. And we really have to think, well, what things do we want to collect? What should we collect at the moment um, and save for the future about the refugee crisis, uh, for example? So these are very, very hard questions uh, for museums about what um, they will do. Now, we could say maybe they could just try and keep one example of everything. But that's an awful lot of stuff. Um, and already we know that museum stores are packed. Typically, a museum shows 
less than 10% of the stuff that it actually has. And many things, they're never going to come out uh, of, of the stores. Now, what we could think is maybe um, we could instead think about um, digitizing uh, uh, what we have. Now, digitizing is definitely great in many ways. Lots of museums are digitizing um, their collections, and that's a breaking of the walls because the stuff, we can find out what is in those collections. And in some ways, what that does is, it, um, is a new playing out of an idea of the um, art historian André Morveau, who had an idea of something that he called the Musée Imaginaire, which usually gets translated into English as the Museum Without Walls. And he was very excited one, in the time when it had become possible to create beautiful pictures of, muse of museum uh, paintings in particular, that people could take these home and they could create their own imaginary museums. Well, maybe people can do something like that with the digital. Um, but is the digital enough? Um, and I thought I wouldn't resist the chance, as I've got this nice big audience here, um, to do a little bit of research. <laughs> so who here, who here would think it would be okay for museums to stop collecting things and just have digital stuff instead? So from now, just collect digital, digital copies. Thank you, one person, <laughs> very noble. <laughs> You're a minority, maybe there was somebody else. Now, <laughs> okay, I don't think I need to go any further. We've got a, a fairly clear majority. All sorts of reasons why maybe the digital is not enough, including um, that if we look now, we can see, we can find out so many things from the materiality of things in the past, things like about diseases in ancient bones and things which we probably couldn't find out just with the digital. But more than that, I would say as a cultural anthropologist, there seems to be a kind of deep need uh, in people to keep hold of the stuff. And perhaps that's especially the case in our societies where we have so much um, ephemerality, so many new things being produced that we need a sense, we need to believe that in this world where so much gets thrown away quickly, that some things are kept. Now, we know that even museums that put their stuff online, people are still going, people still want to go to museums. More people go to museums than to football matches. These are the kind of statistics we like if we work in the museum field. Um, of course, people go to museums for many reasons. They go, look at the stuff, they go, for social reasons, to look at other people um, as well. That's something that definitely goes on in museums. Um, some of these questions are ones that I'm going to be looking at um, with colleagues. So the question is, what do uh, we keep and how do we make some of those um, decisions about that? So if the digital isn't enough, we've got we haven't got enough space for it. What are we going to do? How are we going to think about some of those things? Um, well, a couple of projects that have just begun. One, I just moved to Berlin um, last month um, to begin a, um, a project uh, called Making Differences, where I'll be looking in Berlin. Um, and another, the Heritage Futures project, um, which began um, earlier this year with colleagues in the UK and colleagues uh, in Sweden. I'll just mention a couple of brief examples uh, from those projects. Here in Berlin, this is one example of um, some research uh, which looked at um, existing collections. And these um, objects that you see there in that picture um, are from, uh, they're called Boccio. They're from fond people of Benin, and they'd been collected, and they'd never seen the light of day. And what this project did was work with some people uh, uh, from Benin to 
use those objects to create new linkages and new connections uh, with people to bring them out of the collections and to really think about what can we do with what is there already. In our Heritage Futures project, what we're doing there is we're really trying to look at a whole range of different locations in which people have to grapple with the question of what do we keep for the future. And so we're looking at a very big range of um, cases, and I've just put a couple of examples. These ones are actually being looked at by uh, my colleague Cornelius Holtdorf in Sweden. Um, and there we have the New Horizons project, which involves sending messages into outer space, um, which I think connects with some of the themes that we've heard about today. Um, and another part of that actually looks at questions of dealing with nuclear waste over a very long period of time. And what we're trying to do through this is really to think about how people deal with the question of what do we keep for the future and how, how do we care for it, and bring some of those things back to the museum to ask the questions of what's going on there. Now, what we do know already is that there's a great range of ways of thinking about these things in societies. We do know that actually we are in quite a particular cultural moment at the moment with, it seems, an extremely heightened sense that we ought to collect and save. But, and actually I think this relates very much to the talk before, the sense of so much data, how do, we, how do we deal with it? We do know that there are cultures that have other kinds of ideas. So traditionally, in Igbo culture, for example, it was traditionally the case that wooden artworks were supposed to rot away, because that is how creativity will be released for future generations. Now, the, taking that straightforwardly to the museum, that would, be, um, uh, uh, that would be a breaking of the walls too far. Um, but there are ideas that we can take from other places to rethink what's going on. But more than anything, what we want to do is to really open up the questions about what museums do. Think about the fact that they are such important places because they are deciding what bits of the past will matter for the future, uh, what bits of the present will matter for the future. Already museums are really trying to bring more people in to participate in these kinds of debates. And what we want to do in our research is to work with museums, um, to think about cultural heritage, and to really analyze what goes on. What does matter to people? Which objects? Why? What kind of information that goes, goes with them? And these, these are questions, really, that matter very much to us um, in society today. Um, because really, this, when we grapple with those questions, we're also grappling with what kind of society do we want today? Whose voices, whose pasts, whose futures, whose are we keeping? So thank you very much. <laughs>